Today we are going to service the transmission on my V8 Colorado behind me. Uh, it has some TCC lockup issues, uh, it really needs a drain plug, and it's just generally due for a service, you know, a filter and new fluid because it's got 80,000 miles now. So the first thing we're going to do is remove these U-joint uh, strap bolts on the front of the front drive shaft. And the purpose of this is so we can put the drive shaft out of the way so we can get to these bolts on the transmission pan. So the easiest way to do this is to put a screwdriver in here to keep the shaft from turning uh, as you loosen the bolts so you can break them loose. Remember though, screwdrivers are only for unscrewing or screwing screws and you shouldn't use them as prying devices. Uh, so anyways, these particular bolts have a 7 16 head. Um, the bolts on the other end of the shaft are actually a 10 millimeter head, but that part of the shaft is a lot harder to get on and off and you don't really have to remove both sides. However, if you want to, go ahead. Now, once you get this drive line apart, it's a great time to inspect the U-joint. Feel If you feel any grittiness in it or uh, any play, it needs to be replaced. And uh, it's probably also a good time to uh, put a couple pumps of grease in there if it's a serviceable U-joint. Now, once you rotate the yoke just right, you'll be able to get the shaft to slide out. Um, with a little bit of manipulation of the U-joint. Now it's important that you're really careful with the caps on this U-joint because they can slide off. This particular one doesn't have much wear, but if it was more worn, you may need to use a piece of tape wrapped around the end of the shaft to keep the caps on. So we're just going to put this shaft over to the side and then I'm going to use a zip tie to keep it out of the way. Um, you can just leave it there hanging, but it's much easier if it stays out of the way while you're working. So the next step is to start loosening the bolts on the transmission pan. And if you're lucky enough to have a drain plug in it, use it. Because you're going to see why it sucks to not have one. So the only way you can really sort of do this controlled is to remove the bolts on one side and loosen them on the other so it kind of dips over and just drains from one corner. But as you can see, it runs down the bell housing and it's not very easy to control. It's in your best bet to have a large drain pan. Um, the big square ones are best for this. I'll leave a link below uh, for one of those off of Amazon. Now I sped this up because I was going real slow trying not to make a mess. And in the end, uh, I still splashed quite a bit everywhere. Um, now the bolts on this pan are uh, a 13 millimeter head or half inch same thing and uh, you just slowly start taking them down now uh, I kinda did this the wrong way because uh, the pan it has to be kinda twisted to get around the transmission shifter bracket or the cable bracket and uh, it almost doesn't clear the heat shield on the side with the uh, drive shaft so it's a little tricky on this one. A lot of other vehicles, or if it, even if it was a two-wheel drive Colorado, are probably easier. Um, but in the future, I won't have this problem again because it's going to get a uh, drain plug. Now, you could just drill a hole in the pan while it's on the vehicle, but you're probably going to cover your drill in ATF, and you kind of need to know where to drill so you don't damage something inside the pan. So I elected to do it on the on the ground after the pan was removed. Something else worth noting is uh, you don't have to take the bracket off for the uh, cable for the shifter. You can kind of just jam uh, a socket up in there at an angle and you can get those bolts on and off. Now when you go to put them back on it's a little bit of a pain. You uh, you gotta have some, some finger dexterity to get them started because uh, you can't start them at an angle of course. I recommend that you wear gloves when you do this and have a bunch of rags or paper towels laying around because uh, you're going to need them. Um, the whole time I was doing this I had ATF running down my arms and uh, it was just generally a mess. So I'm just sitting there with a screwdriver kind of prying the, the pan down once I loosen the bolts because sometimes the pan will actually stick 
um, and I'm just slowly working it, trying to get the, the fluid to drain out at a reasonable rate without making a huge mess. Now right about here is where I finally get the pan to uh, dip over and uh, normally on, on most of the vehicles uh, you can take and, and lower the whole pan down without dipping any of the sides so you keep the fluid in it. But uh, because of the way the shift cable is on Colorado's um, and I'm, I'm presuming it's the same on Silverado's and, and other trucks you uh, you can't do that so um, I dump what I can into this uh, drain pan and then I have a, a five gallon bucket uh, farther down that you can't see and I will set it in there and let it drain for a couple of minutes now when you go to clean an ATF spill up uh, there's a few ways to go about it um, it's a detergent so you really shouldn't mix any water with it or it just makes a mess uh, what I usually do is uh, take some uh, non-clumping kitty litter or, uh, or even sawdust to soak it up and then uh, clean all that off and, and you know throw it in the trash and then I can take uh, like a mop and uh, something uh, like you know a simple green and clean it up off the floor uh, but it's, uh, it's no fun to clean up at all as you can see, it would have been way easier if I could have just taken a plug out and let it drain before I made this huge mess. But we're going to fix that. So uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is uh, pull the filter off. And uh, nothing really holds this in uh, other than the, the pan being on it. So you can just kind of work it back and forth and slide it down. Now uh, the new filter comes with a new uh, gasket or uh, it's not really an o-ring, um, a rubber grommet that can go up into the transmission. Um, I only messed with trying to remove this for about a half second and then uh, decided that I'd just reuse it since there was nothing wrong with it. Um, and then uh, next is I'm going to slide this little TCC solenoid out. So uh, when you remove the clip on this, you've got to be super careful you don't break it. Now, if the transmission's gotten hot in the past a lot, it's going to be brittle. And if you do happen to break it, you're going to want to put a uh, zip tie or something else to keep it from uh, working its way off. Or just replace the harness and the transmission. Uh, most of the time, if the... Uh, if the harness is, is eaten up like that where the plastic is breaking, you should just you can just buy a whole new harness and replace it. Uh, so anyways, once we unhook that connector on the TCC solenoid, we rotate it around so we can pull the clip out. And all you need is a little screwdriver to pop that clip out. Um, make sure you hold on to it real tight. You don't want to lose that. And then uh, once you've pulled that clip out, uh, you can just rotate the, the TCC solenoid back and forth a little bit and slide it right off. And now you can slide your new one in. So I'm replacing this with a brand new AC Delco brand uh, TCC solenoid. The part number is 2422772. It was only about $32 off of Amazon. I would really, really avoid buying like any odd named brands of this like unless it's reputable you know unless it says uh, AC Delco or uh, Motorcraft or uh, you know maybe like uh, one of the the good transmission companies like Sunax or Transco I wouldn't touch it so all you have to do is uh, push the clip back on now with the uh, connector facing downward on the solenoid and then you can uh, you can rotate the solenoid around uh, and plug the uh, electrical uh, connector back into it and you're done. Don't forget to put your new filter on before you replace the pan. Um, unfortunately the video got cut short right here. My battery died. But uh, all you do is take the new filter and uh, make sure that there is a grommet up in the hole or you have one on the filter if it's missing from the transmission side and slide it up. 
Today we are going to install this Dural uh, 13010 Universal Drain Plug Kit with an 8th inch MPT plug. They're $11 off of Amazon and they're pretty easy to install. You don't need to weld it or anything like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my Ryobi drill with a step drill bit to put a hole in the pan at a predetermined location I figured out. Now I put this hole in a spot where it's easy to, to, to access under the truck but it doesn't interfere with the filter or any of the valve body components. Make sure you uh, look at into that before you drill the hole. So I'm just going to drill all the way in here until the hole is big enough to fit uh, this drain plug outer housing into. And that looks like it's good. So the next thing I got to do is clean up the hole uh, because the edges uh, have some metal and whatnot and it'll keep the plug from uh, from sealing up all the way. It just has a nylon nylon gasket on it. So uh, I'm going to use a chamfer bit just because I had one handy in my garage. This is a uh, chamfer bit right there and it's just used to clean the inside uh, radius or edge of a hole and it's like a machinist tool. You can buy these off of Amazon too. There's other ways to do it. You could use some sandpaper uh, and uh, a larger drill bit will work a lot of times. Um, I just happen to have this handy. So uh, now that that's done, I am going to clean around the hole so there is no debris uh, that can mess up the nylon gasket. Uh, you always want to uh, make sure that the area is clean before you install one of these. So I'm just wiping this off and uh, then I'm going to put the actual drain plug kit on. Now to install this drain plug you are going to need two three-quarter inch wrenches. I actually used a wrench and a socket. So you slide it over like so and then uh, on the other side you put the nut on and uh, you want to tighten this uh, fairly tight. You know uh, it's not going to push a nylon uh, washer out very easily but you don't want to crush the washer. If it starts looking deformed you've gone too far. Okay the next step is to put the uh, actual pipe plug into the drain plug and uh, on this we are going to put some pipe tape around it just so it's less likely to leak. Now it's important when you put pipe tape on that you wrap it around the threads in such a way that it's not going to unravel when you tighten down the uh, pipe plug. So uh, if, you, if you're looking at the side that you insert the tool into on a pipe plug um, you want to wrap it uh, counterclockwise because in order to tighten you'll go clockwise if that makes any sense. It's also important that you use a wrench on the outside of the uh, drain plug kit when you're tightening down the, the pipe plug itself that way you don't spin the outside and uh, you wouldn't normally have to do this on most drain plugs because they would be welded in or they'd be part of the pan but anytime you install a kit like this it's important that you use two wrenches. The next step is to thoroughly clean this uh, inside of this pan. Now the outside doesn't really matter but the inside does and so does the gasket, uh, the gasket surface, you know the edge of the pan. So uh, what I like to do is I wipe it out with a rag and I get all the big stuff and then I use a paper towel and I make sure I just get all of it and you notice it looks brand new now. And then the next thing you've also got to do is there's two magnets inside of this pan to, to pick up any metal fragments or uh, debris that comes from normal wear of the clutches. So I like to wipe those off and then put them back in the pan. And you'll notice the pan actually has little marks where they're supposed to go. And here's another little tip that'll make things easier for you. And not so much on this style gasket, but on the older cork gaskets. Um, in order to keep the gasket in place when you're trying to put it up on the vehicle, um, I like to use some zip ties through the holes of the rail. So I'm actually going to zip tie this gasket in place so I don't have to deal with it falling inside the pan when I'm trying to get the bolts started. Now this particular gasket, the holes are just sized exactly right so that it'll hold the bolts in place, but not all of them are that way. Um, either way, it doesn't hurt because uh, once you get all the other bolts started, you simply cut the zip ties and pull the zip ties out and uh, then you can put those last four bolts in. 
All right, next up we are going to clean the gasket surface on the transmission for the pan. Um, I usually just uh, take another paper towel and I wipe all this down and then I can actually put the pan up. Um, then I have to get all the bolts started. Now the, the process I do on this is I, uh, I just use an extension and a socket and I hand thread the bolts in to make sure they're started properly. Um, you don't want to cross thread one of these bolts into a transmission case because it can make the whole transmission case junk or you might have to put an insert in there just not worth it so get them all uh, hand started in there make sure they're decent and then uh, I cut the four zip ties and put the last four bolts in by hand and then I cheat and I use my little mini impact to uh, run all the bolts up but I don't use that to tighten them because it's very easy to strip out uh, any kind of uh, aluminum when a bolt's going into it so I just uh, run it up real quick um, just till it's snug and then I go back over it with a standard uh, ratchet and uh, and tighten it down to where I'm happy with it now there is a specific uh, torque that you're supposed to run these down to a specification um, I've been doing this for a long time and I just kind of do it by hand it's not the right way but uh, it does me just fine if you're unsure and you haven't uh, done this kind of work a lot it's in your uh, best interest to uh, find out what the actual torque rating is I'm guessing it's probably somewhere around 15 or maybe 20 foot-pounds and then uh, once these are all tightened down, you know, equally, uh, I go back with a rag and I just uh, wipe everything off. Um, there's still ATF everywhere, which is super annoying. I, you know, usually after I've done work like this, I take the truck to a car wash and spray the bottom side off with a pressure washer. We're in the final stretch, so now we just have to cut this zip tie and maneuver the drive shaft back onto the yoke, and then we can reattach the straps and uh, put the bolts in. Now you'll want to be careful that you put the straps back on the same way they came off. If you uh, look on the underside of the straps, you'll see that uh, there is a uh, wear mark or uh, there's a it's obvious which way it goes on so um, once you do that you know uh, snug down the bolts by hand and then you'll want to go grab your screwdriver and stick it in there so it doesn't twist while you tighten it down and these don't call for a very high torque uh, I want to say they're around 22 foot-pounds but I will try and put uh, the actual rating or uh, torque of the bolts uh, down below Now the final thing to do is open the hood up and uh, pull the dipstick out and you're going to put some fluid back in there. Now uh, the way I do this is uh, with the truck off I uh, put a bunch of fluid in there to fill up the pan and then I go start the truck and I cycle the truck through uh, the gears um, you know, so reverse, first, second, third, fourth, whatever gears it may have, and then put it back into park and, uh, and check the fluid again while it's running. And uh, that seems to do pretty good at, at getting the air out of the system. Um, you are supposed to check the fluid with the truck up to temperature, so you might need to let it sit for an idle, or sit for a while and idle, but. Uh, you don't want it sitting there idling with no fluid in the transmission or low fluid because the temps will skyrocket and you could damage it.
So at this point, you just keep adding a little bit of fluid and then check the level until you get it up to uh, between the hash marks. Um, this particular truck took just a hair over a gallon after all of that. And then uh, I do recommend that after you uh, take it on a drive for 10 or 15, 20 miles, you check the fluid one more time or check it the next day. You really don't want to run around with low fluid level in a uh, 4L60 because it, uh, it will most certainly self-destruct. Thanks everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here is another video for you to watch.